Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I am Mike Sinnerman. Joining me is supersized Big Phil Henderson. What's going on, Phil? Hey, not much, Mike. But tonight, going down in the cage, we've got a team from Elko, Nevada. There's not much to do out there in Elko. These guys are pretty tough. They call themselves the Hitmen out there, the, the High Desert Hitmen crew. And I'm going to tell you, we've seen a couple of them, and they are pretty damn tough. But your main event features a guy we haven't seen in a little while. We've missed him. The Jer Bear's back. Oh, man, the Jer Bear's back. One of my all-time favorite fighters. But he's going to get the Sugar Low. And you never know what's going to happen when the Sugarloaf fights, Mike. Well, the Sugarloaf has been making some noise for himself, and really it's kind of one of those situations where the flash from the past coming to fight one of the tops of the current age, and uh, that's going to be one heck of a fight in your middleweight division. Jer Bear bringing back the singlet. You want to stick around for that. It's the ultimate combat experience coming right at you. Eight, seven, featherweight division one of those guys we talked about from high desert hitman crew tough tough kid dan stenovich we've seen him fight in the ultimate combat once before gave the top dog in the lightweight division charlie kent all he could handle just a few weeks back what do you know about this kid he's got boxing skills he's got wrestling skills skills i guess he plays like fourth or fifth in state in nevada i mean there's not a lot to do in elko so this kid's pretty tough he's training all the time mike there's plenty to do in Elko, Nevada. But he's fighting one of the toughest guys here in the UCE, Dave Allred. This kid is a good-looking prospect in his own right. Yeah, Dave Allred, great jiu-jitsu game. Uh, we haven't seen his stand-up yet, but he's got Muay Thai shorts, so I think it means something, Mike. We've seen his stand-up, and it's not all that great, but it's getting better. Lightweight in the whole bar, check it out. What I like about these two guys is they're very similar. You, you said that uh, Dan Stenovich has some boxing abilities. I was not all that impressed with his boxing last time he fought for us, but he was fighting a kid named Charlie Kent. Charlie Kent's as good a wrestler as we've seen, and, and Dan was just as good a wrestler as he was. Yeah, you know, uh, Charlie Kent, first time we've seen him have a hard time getting a takedown, Mike, and that was against Dan Stenovich. Uh, Dan did have some pretty active hands during that fight, but yeah, you're right. I haven't seen his uh, boxing skills come out yet. Speaking of a guy with absolutely no stand-up game, <laughs> Dave Allred, you can see two black eyes. He's walking around with those on almost a daily basis. That's because if you swing at him, you're more than likely going to hit him. Yeah, that, that's what happens, Mike. I mean, he, he's definitely a grappler um, and a jiu-jitsu practitioner. He's definitely not a striker. Well, he's got a face that you either want to kiss or slug, and it looks like people have taken the uh, latter option late recently. He's been eating a few shots, but pretty durable kid. You see right there, uh, he's starting out with a kick. But again, from a technical standpoint, not the prettiest kick I've seen. No, Mike, and uh, he's throwing a little leather there that didn't connect. But uh, now he's, he's grappling up. He's clinched up now. So uh, this is where he likes to fight to be. Well, both these guys showed some good things in the clinch last time we've seen them fight. Uh, I just mentioned their stand-up wasn't all that great. Now, this right here is a submission hold that Dave Allred's been working on. Doesn't look like it's going to work on a fighter like Dan Sanovich. No, he, he has what's called a TP body lock there, Mike. And uh, uh, that's not the TP body lock I'm used to, but uh, Dave did have it on, but it didn't, it didn't seem to pay off. It is one of those pain compliance moves, and it's been working on guys in the gym, but it <laughs> didn't work right there. Sanovich is a, a, a tough kid, obviously. Kid that's uh, got the, the wrestling background that he has. Kind of used to pain. Right here, you see Dave Allred trying for some type of submission. Uh, it doesn't look like he's quite going to get it, but that was close. Now he's underhooked his leg there, Mike, and uh, he was looking either for a submission or a sweep, and uh, now oh. he's coming around a little bit, but uh, Stenovich pulled out. Stenovich seeing that coming, and, and that's a great uh, game of chess right there between the two of them. It looked like uh, originally Dave Allred was going for a triangle, switched up to an arm lock, and as you mentioned, possibly a sweep, and every time he did something, Stenovich had just the right counter for it. 
Yeah, he did. You know, we do got to give Dave Allred credit. He is pretty slick on the ground, Mike. He, uh, he does have some good jiu-jitsu skills, but there are striking involved in this, and that does change the game a little bit. They do call it mixed martial arts, and part of that mix is uh, punching. <laughs> Dave Allred has found out the hard way, apparently, uh, somebody's told him twice uh, when they punched him in his face that you need to learn how to strike or at least how to block those strikes. Well, you know, Mike, that is where some high-level jiu-jitsu practitioners have a hard time adjusting to mixed martial arts. They're so good at jiu-jitsu that when they get in there and they're mixing punches in there, sometimes they forget that, hey, i got to cover my face up. It reminds me of the old joke. What do you tell a mixed martial artist uh, with two black eyes? I, I, I haven't heard that one. Nothing. Mike. He's already been told twice. <laughs> And there he goes, back to the TP body lock. And, uh, bum, bum, <laughs> going back to what didn't work before, and uh, like I said, Dave Allred, bit of a slow learner. That's why you got to punch him twice to tell him the same thing. He's trying that same body lock that didn't work early in the round. Maybe should go to something else, my friend. You know, the other thing, though, too, Mike, I would like to see Stenovich try and pass his guard or, or, or work for a little something instead of burying his head in his uh, belly there. Um, uh, Interesting like but action there. Well, how, how do you score this first round? Obviously, Stenovich winding up on top, but I've seen most of the offense coming from Allred underneath. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think it's kind of even right now. I think, uh, you know, Stenovich is just burying his head in his chest, and, and it's kind of hard to get, get you off of there. He's doing enough to keep from getting stood up, but I think a lot of that enough was Dave Allred was looking for submission. So uh, that's going to call a conclusion to the first round, a pretty good first round if you like grappling uh, but not a whole lot of action if you like striking but uh, both these guys have made it through the first round none the worse for wear looks like they're going to get a little bit of words of advice in their corners we've got round two when we come back back to the ultimate combat experience you've just joining us dave allred and dandy dave stenovich are mixing it up for you here dave allred a local boy and uh, dandy dan stenovich that is uh, coming all the way from elko nevada to mix it up round number one was a pretty tightly contested match stenovich getting a uh, takedown in the early going but it seemed as though uh, phil and i agreed that it, most of the action was coming from underneath from dave allred and that's probably the first time i've agreed with you mike <laughs> but I do agree with you. That was a close round. And uh, second round, we got a little bit of action, though. Well, uh, Stenovich got a takedown and tried for a guillotine back to guard, but it didn't work. Kicks and fists are flying here in the first round. And uh, Dave Allred finding himself on top, which is a switch uh, from last round. Can he do anything from on top? That's the big question that remains unanswered. I'm not really quite sure what he's working for here. He is trying to stay out of the guard, but doesn't look like he's quite going to be able to do that. No, it looks like Stenovich is trying to get back up on top here. And, and a fireman uh, Allred, carry. Allred got reversed off of a fireman carry, Mike. You're right. Wow. Uh, I like. I would like to see Allred get a little bit more of a base and kind of pound down on Stenovich there. Allred was looking to try to keep the back of Stenovich, it looked like, and just didn't quite want to give up position. And consequently, he finds himself here with uh, having given up his back and uh, wisely turns and faces his opponent. Now finds himself up against the cage, and this is reminiscent of what happened in round number one with with Stenovich's head buried in his chest and is kind of going to work on the body. And you know, Mike, if that happened to me in that first round, the last place I'd want to be is on, is on the bottom again if I was Dave Allred, because you know that's going to happen again with Stenovich. He's going to kind of ride him out a little bit. Well, Phil, you haven't fought in the lightweight division in a long time, so it'd be hard to really put yourself in their shoes, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I don't remember the fourth grade that well, Mike. That's probably the last <laughs> time I was a lightweight, but I'd like to see Dave Allred try and keep that top position and, and, and pound away a little bit. And he got reversed, and now we're back to where we were in the first now round. Now we're back to where we were. And really, uh, it, it looks as though the tank on Allred is kind of starting to dwindle just a little bit. Uh, that, you know, these, these reversal attempts don't have the same zing that they did in the first round. It looks like, wow, it took some big shots right there. He looks like he's in trouble here, Mike. Uh, Stenovich has a rear mount and is working for a choke. Let's see what kind of defense uh, Dave Allred has. We've only seen him trying to submit people. Haven't seen him in a lot of uh, submission problems yet. I've oh. got confidence in his defensive capabilities, but you know what I'm more concerned about is just his conditioning. When you get into a position like this, 
you know, it, it's hard. When you get tired, it's hard to defend this stuff. He's doing a great job of keeping his chin tucked in and making things difficult on old Mr. Stenovich, but, boy, you can see it's not a comfortable spot to be in. Well, he's he's doing a good job defending, but I'm a little disappointed in uh, Stenovich's attacking with the choke, Mike. He's, he doesn't look like he, he's putting the choke on at all the right way. Well, it might have something to do with the master underneath him, making things very difficult. As, as we said, there's a pretty good matchup between these two. I think they're very evenly matched. Stenovich clearly winning round number two on my scorecard. He got a little more aggressive and it was more dominant in the second round. It could be round one, it, it could be a round apiece. It could be both rounds for Stenovich. Uh, I don't really see, uh, obviously, the possibility of Dave Allred being up on the judges' scorecards at this point. No, I don't see him being up either, Mike. And here we go into round number three. And uh, if Allred wants it, he's got to come take it, Mike. He definitely does. He's got a, a big hill to climb. And <laughs> it doesn't look like he's got much in the tank to get that climbing done. He's very tired. You can see that. One, two down the pipe right there by Stenovich. And a big flurry to follow. Very aggressive first move by Dan Stenovich. And that's really what he had to do right here. Just kind of set the tone for the round. He's got this fight in the bag. If he can kind of set the tone in the early part of the round, he should have an easy walk through the rest of it. Did a great job of that. Yeah, he, he did, Mike. He, uh, we're getting going through a little bit of reversals and reversals here. And uh, Stenovich is uh, showing me some pretty good wrestling skills, though, Mike. He, he's showing some great stuff. But really now, Dave Allred is in a deep hole because not only is he up against trying to win back rounds, but he's behind in this round. So he's going to have to come away with a convincing remainder of the round to even have a chance in this fight. Or he just needs to try and go for the win, Mike. I don't think he can win on the judges' scorecard. He needs to try and submit or uh, put those uh, tie shorts to use and show us some of his uh, tie boxing. If use can't submit, he should quit? Is that what you're telling us? No, I didn't say he should quit, but I think he needs to try and go for the submission. Or at this point, he can't win on the judges' scorecard, in my opinion. He's, he's got to win. He's got to knock him out or tap him out. Do you think strategically him laying underneath him like this is going to get him anywhere? Not unless he knows some uh, secret move that I'm not aware of yet, Mike. I'm not aware of it either, and, and, and I hate to say this. I'm going to tell you, I've gotten to know this Dave Allred the last few weeks. He's a cool, cool cat. I really enjoy being around him. I don't like seeing him get beat like this, but it looks as though the writing is on the wall. You see right there, he's taking some shots to the face. What I've been curious to find out is how will he endure if he does get punched in the face like that because he hasn't really been hit a lot. He's, not, he's a grappler turned fighter just recently. And you see right here, he's working on a submission there. Oh, man, did he lose it? Yeah, ah. Stenovich pulled out of it again. And, ah, uh, it was close. Um, Allred, yeah, like you said, Mike, you know, Allred's getting punched a few times. And, uh, you know, he's not turning over and rolling up in a ball like we've no, seen some jiu-jitsu practitioners do. No, and, and you mentioned a moment ago that maybe he was looking for some sneaky that we didn't get. But it really seemed to be that he was just playing possum a little bit there and looked for that opportunity. Uh, for, when, when that arm came available, he went after it. Man, he is a cagey fighter, and he's shown a lot of maturity beyond uh, his experience, but he's really being beaten here tonight. Stenovich, I think he smells blood, and, and this third round is all Stenovich, and he just continues to pound away at Dave Allred. Stenovich just a little too much in uh, young Dave Allred's career as far as his combination of wrestling and striking. I think Stenovich is doing a good job of wrestling and striking. Not so much looking for the submission, whereas Allred is, uh, you know, taking it on the chin a little bit, Mike. Uh, well, and he's just outpaced him. You see right here, as time goes on, Stenovich seems to be getting stronger and stronger, where the reverse can be said about Allred. Granted, it's much more uh, tiresome to be underneath and be bearing the weight of your opponent, but Stenovich just seems to be getting energized each and every time he connects a punch. He wants to throw another one and uh, showing really good stuff here. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> he just about landed another shot there to finish things, but no doubt in my white mind, he has won this fight. Came into hostile territory. Dave Allred, a very popular fighter in the Ultimate Combat, brings a lot of fans, uh, but uh, there's just no way he wins this fight. No, I don't, I don't see him winning either, Mike. Let's see what uh, the judges have to say. Well, it looks like they've already done spoken. Unanimous decision, Danny Dan Stanovich, 30-27 all around on all judges' scorecards. Big win for him all the way from Elko, Nevada. Statewide Bell Bonds. If the devil made you do it, Statewide Bell Bonds will get you through it. All right, Dave Allred, he's over here a little bit blue, and I gotta tell you, I don't know why you're upset with yourself. I'm a little black and blue. You're, blue. you're a little black and blue, but Dave, you fought a hell of a fight. I think you did a great job, man. What are you so upset about? Uh, I just didn't really execute my game plan. I uh, got comfortable trying one move, and when it didn't work, I should have moved on to another move. And when it didn't work, he gave you a 
across the face. And uh, you're, yeah. you're a nice little shiner tonight. And you've been sporting one the last couple of weeks. Yeah. You're a fighter. And it shows. What's next for you, man? Uh, I go back to the gym, hit some training. I need to work on a, quite a few things. Got comfortable on bottom. Should have stayed on top a lot more. We're going to work on your feet a little bit too, right? Work on your stand-up game just a little bit. What are you talking about? That uh, one punch. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, right? That one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I learned, I learned it from your sister. It was crazy. <laughs> Dave, I got to tell you, I got nothing but love for you, brother. And I can't wait to get in the gym and train with you a little bit more this week. Unfortunately, I got to say this to you. Tonight, you were good, but just not good enough. Thanks for being a part of the experience. Uh, thank you, Mike. Whatever the vision, we can assist. Celerity Investments. Log on to investwithcelerity.com for more information. Dan Stenovich, that was a pretty dominating performance tonight, man. What were your thoughts on the fight? Uh, you know, I wanted to stand up, wanted to try to knock him out, but, you know, my wrestling took over every time. I thought I got a good hit, he'd, he'd start dropping like he wanted to get on the ground, so I figured, well, I'm comfortable with my wrestling, you want to take it there, let's do it. Oh, I mean, uh, Dave Allred, you know, he came into my gym this week, tapped out all my kids up there, and I got pissed. I mean, the kids got serious ground skill, but, you know, you, you went through them a little bit, you were very dominant. Um, I was impressed with your performance. What's in the future for you, buddy? You know, more fights, more training. My coach, Chris McLeod, uh, Jeff Watson, uh, the guy that makes it all possible for us. We train at his gym, High Desert Hitman. He's in there training us, busting our asses at least five, six days a week. Gonna start hitting two a days and uh, we're gonna take it from there. All right, man, well, we, uh, you've already seen good things out of you so far. Last time you were out here, you had a little bit of a controversial decision, but um, I'm excited to see more of your fighters here in the future. Yeah, yeah, last time, you know, Charlie Kent, he's, a, he's the champ, he's a tough guy. Controversial decision, I felt I'd won it, but tough. And you know what? Just got to train and get better. Made some mistakes, and that was letting it go to the judges. So I saw the fight, too. I thought you won, but, I mean, it is what it is. If you go to the judges, that's what it is. But, hey, thanks for being part of the experience, man. Hey, can I uh, I want to thank the High Desert Hitman, my coach Chris, Jeff Watson, um, the Elko Daily Free Press, KNV, and all our sponsors. Thank you. We told you that Dan Stanovich kid was pretty tough, and it really wasn't the stand-up that got it for him. It was his wrestling and his ground game. He actually beat Dave Allred at his game. I didn't think he would if that's where the fight went, Mike, but Dave Allred just had a little bit of problems with him, you know what I mean? That kid from Elko's pretty tough, Mike. I'm telling you, watch out for this Senevich kid. He just might be around when it comes finals time. In your bantamweight division, little teeny tiny guys, a kid that's uh, been training at my gym for a little while, Stevenson Keith, good looking kid, going up against another one of the boys from Elko. What do you know about him? Man, he's supposed to have a very well rounded game and a little bit of karate taekwondo mixed in with that, Mike. Oh my goodness, bantamweight, no holds barred, check it out. I love it when the karate guys come to fight in the Ultimate Combat Experience because usually they learn that eh, what Sensei taught you just doesn't work in a real fight. But Stevenson Keith, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This kid's got a pretty well-rounded game, good stand-up, decent wrestler, kind of a novice on the ground, but he's a pretty scrappy guy. Yeah, Stevenson Keith is a brawler, Mike, and uh, let's see how he matches up against the uh, karate kid. But this karate guy, he knows a little bit of everything. He wrestles. He just has a background in karate and taekwondo, Mike. Daniel LaRusso lives 5'7", 135 pounds, training with a pretty good camp now. I mean, I expect to see him to be pretty well-rounded. All the guys that have come out of that crew have represented themselves very well inside the cage. Dave Selly said your referee for this one, giving some last-minute instructions to these guys. These guys weren't hearing a dang thing he said. They were bouncing and just ready to start rocking. Well, I like the lighter weight fights here, Mike, because you get to see a lot of action, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of Ooh. fast action, so. You saw a fast sidekick right there from the Karate Kid, but he ate a big right hand, and that's what you're talking about. The sensei forgets to tell you that when you throw those sidekicks, you just might get punched in your noggin. Yeah, I mean, if you're too worried about waxing on and waxing off, sometimes you get waxed, Mike, <laughs> and that's about what happened right there to Mr. Barker. No doubt about it, and Steven Sakeep finds himself on top, but it looks like uh, his opponent's got a pretty decent guard, uh, Dustin Baker. He's got a nice tight guard. At least he understands ground game. He's not completely a uh, stand-up karate fighter. 
No, he's trained out there at the High Desert Hitman Gym in Elko, Nevada. So, you know, all the fighters we've seen out of there, they have some ground, they have some striking. So I think he knows what he's doing as far as being in a mixed martial arts Looking arm for an arm lock right there, just didn't get it. Stevenson Keith able to pull his arm out just in time. We got a pretty good fan base out in Elko, Nevada. Those guys uh, come out and support. We get a lot of fighters from that area. So a big shout out to the Elko, Nevada crew. But right here, your boy isn't faring so well underneath the uh, local boy, Stevenson Keith. No, he's not. Stevenson Keith, if he knew what a, a peck choke or north-south choke was, I think he'd have tried to lock that on there. He's right in the position for it. But uh, I think Stevenson Keith doesn't really want to submit anyone. He just wants to, you know, punch you in the face. And uh, Mr. Barker's in a little bit of a problem here, Mike. Yeah, yeah, that's what we mentioned uh, in the open for this fight. Stevenson Keith, real novice on the ground. You see right there, he was working for a shoulder lock. Just he forgot you got to secure things first. You got to get position before you submission. Uh, but this is what you talk about. He just likes hitting people. Yeah, he, he you know, Steve is a Keith. I'm pretty impressed with him. He's, he's coming out and taking it to uh, the Karate Kid, Mr. Barker here. And uh, bombs away right here, landing lefts and rights. And he's getting through. Those are not landing on the arms. Those are getting through to the head. And every one of these punches are scoring. Stevenson Keith looks like the real deal, Mike. I, I haven't seen too much of him. And he, he's looking pretty good. Uh, Barker better uh, pull something out of his uh, karate uh, kit, you know, and uh, <laughs> do something here. He's forgetting the outward block. Outward block is what you throw when somebody tries to punch you, and I, he's not doing it. No, well, he's outwardly blocking it with his face, Mike, and that's not going to get him the W if this pace keeps up from uh, Stevenson Keith. I'll tell you one thing he is doing now, though, is he's pulling Stevenson Keith in close, keeping him nice and tight there so he's not able to t t sit up and tee up on him and, and land the punches that he was a moment ago. A uh, pretty savvy fighter is this Dustin Barker. He's just kind of getting dominated. Gives up full mount position now. This Stevenson Keith looks like he's just a, a lot stronger than uh, Dustin Barker, Mike. And uh, I, I think that uh, Mr. Barker, he's in a little bit of trouble here. I think Stevenson Keith is just a little too much for him. Well, sometimes strength can be your worst enemy w when you're a novice fighter because Stevenson was trying to pinch his head off right there with this strength and really wasn't getting him anything. This is what he's got to go back to doing, and that is punching him in the face, and he's doing a great job of swiping the hands and then striking to finish this round off. Very impressive first round for Stevenson Keith. Yeah, Mike, I got Stevenson Keith uh, way ahead on the scorecards for, the, for that round. Uh, I don't think you need to be a, a sterling scar to figure that one out. I, I even got that maybe even a 10-8 round. It was that dominant, and Stevenson Keith on the war path, it would seem. He's ready to rock and roll, get ready for this second round. Well, I'm ready to see some of this karate, Mike. I want to see this karate stuff I've been hearing about since I was a little kid that I still haven't seen happen oh. yet. But uh, Oh, a nice exchange of blows right there. Both of them landing on the side of the face here. Now they find themselves in a nice clinch position. Stevenson Keith do, uh, trying to work for a takedown. Yeah, Stevenson in on a takedown. Uh, um, you know, Mr. Barker obviously uh, has a little bit of a uh, takedown defense trained up there with the high desert hit man I'm sure he's been taken down a few times I'm Mike. sure yeah those Dave Sully said getting in there and screaming about something he hates when your fingers even touch the fence he doesn't let you get through him at all and he's right on top of that Dave just looks like he wants to hit somebody right now he just he's like Erlacher Mike he wants to get in there and get a sack Urgh. waiting for someone to get hurt so he can get in there and toss somebody Stevenson Keith really pressing for this takedown here. He hasn't quite been able to get it. That can burn a lot of energy when that happens. Looks like, well, he just kind of fell to his back right there, Phil. I think that was a very tactical mistake by Stevenson Keith. I thought he has better stand-up than uh, Dustin Barker, Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure why he did that. He actually just pulled guard, and now he finds himself on the bottom, and we haven't seen this just yet, but it looks like Dustin Barker was more than happy to oblige him and, and take top position and just start to throw some punches here. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think that uh, Barker has uh, kind of turned the tide. I think you were right, Mike. I think Stevenson Keith is, uh, was a little bit stronger oh. in the early going. Look and arm. Well, attack the wrong arm. But you can hear Stevenson Keith's corner telling him, keep your hands up, bro. Keep yeah, you see up, Daniel bro. over there telling him to keep his hands up, and his hands are up. But uh, <laughs> so, so are Dustin Barker. They're coming up and down on his face. Yeah, I think uh, Stevenson Keith might have uh, blown his wad a little bit, Mike. Can you say that on TV? I think he can. I mean, he's just not cable. Well, this is network television. Can you say that? I'm pretty sure you can. All right. Well, he blew his wad then, and uh, there's nothing really much left underneath. He, he, I think he left it all on the mat in the first round, Mike. Uh, he needs to get busy here, or uh, uh, Dustin Barker might be coming away with a stoppage or a win. You know, right Phil, here. I think you're right. I, I think Stevenson Keith has left the building, <laughs> if you will. You look at his face, and he's done. He's thinking about that ice cold beer they got waiting for him at the bar. 
Yeah, Mike, anytime you see a fighter's a mouthpiece out of their mouth, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that's, that's what just not happened a good there. sign. And uh, then when you see them roll over like that and say, whoa, did you forget to choke me? And because you see my Dave Silvestad right is just ready to tackle one of these two individuals. Dave's right. just itching for it. He can't wait. In fact, Dave's going to tap for him right here. He's oh, tapped. That's and it. It is all over. Stevenson, Keith, man, what a dominant first round. Only, whoa. 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 Wow. We were waiting to see that all night long. The crane technique does work. Oh. It just only works after the fight's over. Maybe for kata or uh, exercise, but Mike. Stevenson but Stevenson uh, Keith was dominating that fight, clearly won the first round, and got beat <laughs> in the second round. And the candlestick, Dustin Barker, blowing kisses to the fans. Stevenson oh. Keith just gassed out, Mike, playing Another it simple. One. This post-fight interview brought to you by our good friends at Great Clips. Go to ultimatecombat.com for participating locations. My man Stevenson a little bit tired over here. Barely even keep his head up. Stevenson, how are you feeling right now, brother? Tired as hell. <laughs> as I predicted. Hey, Stevenson, you were tearing it up in that first round. Now you had that first round won. What happened? Just ran out of gas, that's all. The gas tank went on to empty there. You brought a pretty good crowd out here. They're a pretty fun group. Got a lot of love, man, to supporting you. How was that? Uh, how did that affect you out there in the cage, hearing them out there cheering for you? Not at all. <laughs> you didn't hear them at all? Oh, man, I got to tell you, Stevenson, you're going to come back and do this thing again, aren't you? Definitely. I was, you just got your you just got your beak wet. You're just getting started here. I got to say this to you, though, brother. You were good, but just not good enough. But come back and do this thing again. Got it. All right, man, great job. This post-fight interview is brought to you by Pirate Motorsports, 2010 West, State Street in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Dustin Barker, pretty pre impressive performance, man. He had a little, like, karate kick kicking going on, and, I mean, uh, that was some pretty good stuff, man. What's your thoughts on the fight? Uh, he caught me off guard in the first round. I expected him to try to stand a little bit more, but he got me down. I had a little bit of a tough time surviving that first round, but just kept my calm, kept cool, and waited till the second. You know, he's a tough kid. You weren't fighting a cupcake or a tomato can. You know, he, he's a tough kid. Um, I was pretty impressed with you guys. I'm impressed with all you Elko guys. Uh, I'm looking to see a lot more of you guys. Um, what's what's next for you, buddy? Uh, go back to Elko, man. Training hard. We're getting more and tougher and tougher guys all the time down there. And training's awesome. All right, well, Mr. Barker, thanks for being part of the experience, buddy. Yo, wait, wait. Can I thank my sponsors real quick? Uh, it's Elko Daily Free Press, Jeff Watson, my coach Chris McClough, and mom, dad, they're my biggest sponsors. Thank you, I love you. What do you say, Phil? I just see some waxing on and waxing off, Mike, but that was a little karate kid action out there. Stevenson Keith just didn't have enough answers for Mr. Barker. In your welterweight division, the most intense individual I have ever met in my entire life, Levi Roberts. Who's he fighting? Uh, he's fighting Matt Peterson, but uh, Levi Roberts is a character. He's one of my favorite characters in the show, Mikey. And a very intense character, welterweight nose bar. Check it out. You really have to talk to Levi Roberts to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> However, his opponent, Matt Peterson, pretty laid back guy, Phil. He doesn't have a whole lot to say when you talk to him. No, I couldn't even get a couple words out of him, Mike. Uh, Matt Peterson just wanted to do it in the cage. He didn't really have a lot to say. So. Well, it looks like he's got his game face on today. He's 5'8", 170 pounds out of the Kearns area, and he kind of looks appropriately like a pit bull. And then we've got Levi Roberts, Mike, who is uh, just one uh, character that I, I don't know how else to describe him as a character. He most certainly is that right there. He's 5'11", 165 pounds, goes by the nickname of Leviticus, training over there in the Ultimate Combat Training Center. Both these guys, uh, apparently from the same neighborhood, came all the way over here to fight in the Ultimate Combat Experience cage rather than on a street corner or something. Lonnie Foster giving these guys a little last minute instructions and uh, Looks like both guys are ready to rock and roll. Both of them got ants in their pants. Yeah, they're, better, they're both oh. ready to rock and roll. Kind of an early punch there off the touch glove, but uh, Levi Roberts, I think that got him mad, Mike. I think you can attribute that to inexperience. I don't think Matt Peterson was being unsportsmanlike. He just 
Man, the nerves of your first visit to the cage can be a little overwhelming. And he came out all fired up. Look at these guys going at it, though. Not a whole lot of style, not a whole lot of uh, pretty stuff going on, but they're getting after it. I just saw a two-handed punch by uh, Levi Roberts, Mike. So you <laughs> hit that one right on the button. But Levi is swinging for the fences, and uh, he's wanting to take this Matt Peterson kid apart. Well, he's looking for a takedown and some big uppercuts inside there. Both guys actually landed a few shots on the inside, but it looks like, well, you know, uh, Matt Peterson ducking his head a little too much and paying the price for it. Yeah, uh, Levi seems to be getting a little bit of a timing on his punches there and distance down, Mike, and uh, he, he just rocked Matt Peterson there. He has certainly found his mark, and now uh, Matt Peterson, he thought he was in a track meet for a moment there, and Lonnie Foster stepping in, and I'm not sure, well, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna let Matt Peterson get up again, and, and I'm not sure, maybe Lonnie thought there was an illegal blow or something that happened, uh, but he's going to get him restarted nonetheless. And Levi Roberts right back to where he was at just oh. a moment ago. And that's going to do it right there. Lonnie Foster waving this one off. Once again, not a lot of style or pretty technique in there, but uh, what action. Hey, Mike, Levi Roberts walks away with his first win in the Ultimate Combat Experience. That's got to feel pretty good for him. He's fought some tough competition and, and held his own, but uh, wow. <laughs> she well, she's heavy. holding her own right there, Mike. <laughs> he was holding his own his back like it looked like it hurt there. All right, Levi Roberts with a big win. He doesn't look none too excited right there, but uh, you know he's feeling pretty good on the inside. Always feels good to get that first W, Mike. Absolutely. In my view, this is the best matchup of the night. A couple of guys here that really have been coming on their own, and I think they're, they're improving in all aspects of the game. I think it's a great matchup. Yeah, we've got Mickey Ray, Brad McRae going up against Ty Hamlin from Wyoming. Mickey Ray is my vote for the most improved fighter in Ultimate Combat this year. And Ty Hamlin's just a solid journeyman fighter, so it should be an interesting matchup. Well to wait in the bar, check it out. Brad McRae is without question the most improved fighter of the year. This kid has really come a long way. I think you really described that well, Phil. Uh, kids really come along his, his uh, ground game most is the most uh, market improvement and stand up doesn't look too bad either no mike he's 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 really improved he's not the same guy you know you can just see it in the way he talks and walks he's not the same guy he absolutely. was absolutely he's five foot ten hundred sixty five pounds calls himself an independent fighter but i know he's training down there with the team in utah county now on the other hand slick ty hamblin coming all the way down from wyoming he's six foot one hundred sixty five pounds and uh I don't know where that nickname came from, Phil. Well, I don't know where it came from, Mike, but not a lot of stuff to do up there in Rock Springs, so he's coming down here to mix it up in the Ultimate Combat experience, and we've seen Ty a few times. He's a pretty tough kid. Let's see how it goes on. I think the last word I would use to describe Ty Hamblin is slick. I've seen him hit on the ladies. He ain't slick there. He's not the prettiest fighter. He ain't the most slick-looking guy either, but uh, I don't know where that came from. Well, I, I don't know either, Mike, but uh, maybe, you know, the word, uh, the nickname shot down didn't work too well for him. <laughs> well, shot down would have been more appropriate when you see him hitting on the girls, man. He's a swinging and a missing. Uh, right here, not much swinging going on at all. These guys are just kind of glomming on to one another. And uh, you see right there, Ty Hamlin throwing a knee to the body of Brad McRae, but not a whole lot of offense thus far from either either guy now if brad mccray's holding on to his wings there mike is he maybe flying <laughs> away or could, maybe could that happen maybe he was afraid ty would fly away so he's hanging on to those wings there, keeping him in check dropping down a little lower on the leg there was able to finally secure the takedown there and uh has got himself in a pretty good position now getting a half mount there position for brad mccray yeah right in his corner too mike his corner shouting instructions to him and uh Let's see if Ty Hamlin's got some uh, ground game from the bottom. He does have some ground game, but, I, you know, Brad McRae's ground game has really improved. And you see right here, he's looking at position before he's trying to put this thing away. I'm very impressed with his patience. This is not something we would have seen out of him in the past. He would have been kind of trying to go uh, after a big strike or something and given up position. That not so much the case tonight. No, yeah, you're right, Mike. He's ve being very patient. He's kind of sitting in there. And, oh, it looks like Ty Hamlin might have an arm triangle on. Uh, oh, wow, he trip. sure did kind of sneak that one in there. And, uh, well, almost a reversal there. Uh, he went for a reversal, but in uh, what happened was he got reversed in the attempt to try to get a reversal. Or yeah, excuse me. He, he did, Mike. He tried to reverse, and he got he got, he got rear-mounted. Now it looks like he might be submitted. <laughs> well, yeah, I got fumbled over my words right there, as did Ty Hamlin. <laughs> looks like he's taking a little nap right there. That is going to call, it's going to do it for that fight right there. Ty Hamlin 
got gave up his back and really found himself in a bad spot that he couldn't get out of. Well, he got in that transition there, Mike, trying to do something fancy. And Brad McCray made him pay. He kept it simple and got jiu-jitsu position and tapped him out. Great point, Dan. As we said, really, he's gone from a novice ground fighter to a guy that really is starting to understand things. And you show it showed right there how he was able to thwart that uh, reversal attempt and wind up with a big win. Holy smokes, his High Desert Hitman crew, they got a lot of tough guys, but this guy, <laughs> he's the toughest of the tough. Who is he? That's Willis Bland, Mike, and this guy benches like about 600 pounds, or at least he looks like it. He's tough, he's intense. Let's see what happens when him and Timmerman lock up tonight. Nothing bland about this kid. As you mentioned, he's fighting Travis Timmerman. You can't hear him talk, but he does actually fight pretty tough. Heavyweight Noah Clark, check it out. When you think of heavyweights, you think of big guys, but uh, you don't think of them as big as this guy. Look at this kid. He is a physical specimen. Will Willis Bland from Elko, Nevada. Yeah, Mike, that kid is put together. Um, uh, beach, beach muscles, I don't think so. This kid's solid, Mike. He's solid and got a beautiful tan to go with it. He's six foot tall, 205 pounds, training over with the High Desert Hitman crew, and uh, they put out some pretty tough fighters. This kid, Travis Timmerman, hasn't gotten a win inside the cage yet, but he's showing some very good things. Yeah, he's a tough kid, Mike, a uh, very tough kid, but um, I think he might have his hands full with this kid from Elko, Nevada. No doubt about it. He's got a bit of a reach advantage, though. Six feet, two inches tall and uh, 205 pounds. And <laughs> Willis Bland looks like he's posing for some cameras. You know, he might have been in a bodybuilding competition or two, Mike, so or he a, might be used to that. Or a beautiful man contest or something. <laughs> Uh, Lonnie Foster getting things started right here and um, you know just kind of herky and jerking around looking for some spacing and distance right here. Willis Bland doing what big strong guys do and that's grabbing onto you with a oh wow man this kid is not just a big set of look good looking muscles you can see right there he is he's a really strong kid he threw Travis Timmerman right to the ground. Yeah he picked him up off the ground too Mike a couple inches and did a lateral and just dropped him and uh, he's getting old. Lonnie Foster sees something he doesn't <laughs> like, Mike. You can't stand and strike, and you don't want to make Lonnie Foster mad. He's letting Willis Bland know in uh, no uncertain terms that that's not allowed, my friend, and that's a guy you don't want to get on your bad side. No, you definitely don't want to get old Lonnie Foster on your bad side, but that's another thing you don't want to do is shoot in on some big old arms like that, well, right? Especially when you're shooting in with your arms out uh, as wide as an airplane. And, boy, you, you nailed it right on the head. Look at that. Looks like Willis Bland has got... Travis Timmerman head in a vice, and boy, he's going to pitch his head right off. Oh, it's all over. Nice submission move right there by Willis Plant. Mike got him in a guillotine, got it up tight, and pulled guard and tapped him out. And really had that on tight. Wow, he's posing. Look like he's on a runway here. He's posing once again, feeling pretty good about things. Now he's going to take his little walk down the uh, runway here with his hands held high. Yeah, Mike, very impressive performance by Willis Bland. And uh, Travis Timmerman, well, he'll be back to fight another day. Yo, Adrian, I did it! He looks like Rocky Balboa. I told you, if I saw this kid coming, I'd be scared, and you can see right now that might not be such bad advice. Yeah, Willis Bland, I mean, he just popped Travis Timmerman's head off, basically, almost in a guillotine choke. Ah, uh, big things coming out of this uh, team from Elko, Mike. I'll tell you what, though, man, I tell you, I've been pumping up on these things. Mr. Bland, I'll see you in the weight room. We got more than the combat, don't go anywhere. said wearing a singlet could be fashionable. But here's a guy who did it and made it look so good for so long, left for two years, and he's back, and it still looks so good. The Jer Bear's back, man. The Jer Bear's back, and he's in his singlet. Go, Henderson, he's in his singlet, looking good. Yeah, the Jer Bear's back. He's got a lot of pent-up aggression. He's been on a mission, Mike, and, uh, but he's going up against the Sugar Loaf, who's never been in a church, I'm sure, in his whole life, and uh, it's going to be a clash of styles, Mike. Well, Christmas did go into church the roof would cave in, I assure you that. But this has nothing to do with any of that. The middleweights are going to clash. It's your main event. Check it out. Wow, it's great to have the Jer Bear back. This kid was uh, dominant 
forced in the Ultimate Combat experience several years back, and you see he tucked that singlet away before when he went on his mission, and it looks like it's held up nicely. Yeah, Mike, it looks like it's still in one piece, and you're right. No one was better than the Jerbo. Well, a few guys were, but the Jerbo was the top of the heap two Absolutely. years ago. Absolutely. Six feet, one inches tall, 185 pounds. Now, here's a guy that wasn't around two years ago. He didn't even know really what MMA was back then. Uh, he knew what a, a beer can and meatloaf was. This kid was eating. He said he weighed over 300 pounds. Now he's trying to make some moves in the middleweight division at 5'7", 185 pounds. He's really coming along. Yeah, he is, Mike. He's been very impressive lately. Got racking up a couple of W's. And let's see if the Sugar Loaf's ready to take that next step up. But this is a big step, Mike. Speaking of steps, he should be standing on a step ladder. Do you see how much shorter he was than Jared Bear right there? You know, Mike Chrisman took this fight on a couple days' notice. He took this fight because Lee Doss turned it down. Uh, and, you know, Mike Chrisman said, you know, here's an opportunity for me to step up and see what I made of, see if I belong uh, in the same sentence as the top guys. And, oh, man, what was that? Well, uh, Chrisman got kicked in the face there, Mike. That's what that was. And you definitely see the Jer Bear using his height advantage. Well, wow. You see the singlet, and we know Jer Bear to be a wrestler, but I didn't know he had kicks. And look at his punches, too. He looks like he's been training, and he's putting everything together. Now, Mike Chrisman's got to be thinking, oh, man, I don't want to go to the ground with him, and I can't stand with him. Now what do I do? Well, Sugarloaf swinging for defenses and left himself wide open for the Jer Bear to shoot on him, Mike. Well, that might have been his strategy. He says, I might need to knock this guy out, but he did miss by a mile. And now Jared Bear taking full advantage, winds up on top. But, wow, Chrisman doing a good job of getting out from underneath and getting a reversal out of it. Wow, I thought Chrisman was, uh, was going to be toast there, Mike, and he got on top. And uh, Chrisman looks like he's picked up a little ground skill, Mike. Got a little ground skill, but this is not where you want to be. You don't want to be in Jared Bear's guard. He's got really long legs, and he can submit you very easily. Mike Chrisman's got to be very careful right here. Yeah, when the Jared Bear was fighting before, Mike, his triangle was very well-renowned, caught a lot of people in it. He submitted a lot of guys. I'll tell you what, though. He didn't submit Mike Chris. Mike Chrisman saw it coming and passed right there, did a great job. Now he finds himself having Jer Bear pressed up against the cage. I'm very impressed with what Chrisman's done so far. Chrisman's going for everything, Mike. He wants to step up. Maybe he doesn't want to be the sugar loaf. Maybe he wants to step up and be the gigolo. <laughs> he will never be the gigolo, but, uh, you know, he might come close. You know, people say that I tease him way too much when he fights. Uh, his friends are saying, why do you even talk to that guy? This guy gives you so much crap. I'm going to put it out there right now. I got nothing for love for this, but love for this kid, especially after taking this fight. He wanted the challenge. He wanted to come in here and fight UCE's top dogs, and here he's got his opportunity. Going for an ankle lock, though, but he forgot the ankle. A very key component to that move. Yeah, it is, Mike. And now uh, he's back in the frying pan, and uh, <laughs> he's right in the Jer Bear's guard. And uh, although Jer Bear's a lot bigger, I think this is where he wants uh, Chrisman at. He, he's out of the frying pan and into the fire right now. Look at that Jer Bear. We talked about this. That triangle being very well renowned a couple years ago. Well, he's brought it back, and look, he put it on Crispin. And Chrisman's head's turning all shades of purple. Yeah, he is changing all shades of purple, Mike. He's looking like the mat there, and uh, and uh, this might be all over, Mike. It is over. It's just a matter of time. That thing's on. It's on tight. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> Mike Chrisman, right before taking a little nappy wappy, gave a little tappy tappy, and uh, wow, Jared Bear, very imp impressive performance. I got to take my hat off once again, though, to Mike Chrisman, A, for taking this fight, and B, for doing as well as he did. Yeah, Mike, he did do well. He stepped up when someone else didn't want to fight, and uh, he, he put it out there. Wow. Look Jer Bear, Hank, impressive, though. Look at Hank Weiss with the mullet coming in here, and then Jer Bear bringing in the old Stars and Stripes singlet. These guys are bringing back shades of the 80s. Back, they're bringing them back, Phil. Well, Hank Weiss and the Jer Bear are back. I think a lot of Utah needs to watch out. Well, they need to watch out. These guys are tough guys, and uh, really made a statement tonight, Jer Bear did. Pick up your Ultimate Combat Experience fight wear and other mixed martial arts apparel at Against the Fence in the Valley Fair Mall. You knew you were fighting a tough kid tonight. You knew you were uh, taking on a challenge and you took it on headstrong. Talk to me a little bit about what, went on, uh, what made you want to take this fight. Man, I just want to step up my game, fight better people. I'm sick of fighting kids like Gator, um, where they're not even on my level. Uh, obviously, Jer Bear is way above mine. Um, I just need to train more jiu-jitsu, you know. I learned how to get out of that hole, but I just couldn't get out of it. Uh, you, you took this fight on short notice. Somebody backed out of this fight, and, and you were more than willing to step up. And I got to say, I was very impressed with that. Um, and again, because the level of competition you were going against, that's what impressed me the most. You came out here and you gave it a game effort. I, I, game effort. I think you did very well, showed very well for yourself. And uh, what's next for you, bro? You know, a lot, lot more training, a lot more fighting. Uh, hopefully I can get... You know, more fights, 
I think the bottom line is, though, if you look as good as Jer Bear does in a singlet, you should go with the singlet look. <laughs> Work your ass off and come back looking like the Jer Bear. You don't have the body for it just yet, my friend, but you can do it. Tonight, you were good, just not good enough. Mike Crispin, I got nothing but love and respect for you. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. I just got to thank Statewide Bell Bonds, my sponsor, Combat Cartel, Fight Team, Cole, Voss for coming out, uh, cornering me tonight, and Jer Bear, one hell of an opponent, man. Nice triangle. All right, brother. Great job, man. This post fight interview is brought to you by the United States Army. Be Army strong. Log on to GoArmy.com. Jeremy Brown, you're back after a two-year absence. What was your thoughts on the fight, buddy? It was good. I really appreciate him taking the fight. He did take it short notice, so he's, he's a good opponent. I really appreciate it a lot. I've been having fun. Like That's the thing. It's like my passion. I love it. I have fun when I do it, so that's why I'm back. It's been three and a half years since my last fight, but it's nice to be back. Jared Bear, you are like the most humblest fighter that I've known. I, if you talk to you, if people talk to you, they'd have no idea that you that you compete in mixed martial arts. I, I'm so impressed with you, man. I'm glad to have you back in the experience. I think a lot of people are going to be a little nervous now that the Jared Bear is back. What's your plans for the future, buddy? I'm going to go on a couple of dates, and I'm going to go ready for my next fight. And, and I'm ready. I'm going to be excited here. And I also just wanted to thank Paul, Tom, and Hank Weiss, and for all the guys down at the academy there. It was awesome, yeah, and Hank, he's been my hero. He's the one who started me fighting. He's the one who got helped me get going again. He's been training with me, getting me all ready for the grapple and everything else, so it's been good. Thanks, Hank, thanks, guys. Thanks, Paul Tom. And my friends, too, my friends and my family. They all came, my friend. I got some old mission companions from the mission. It's been good stuff. Well, the Jer Bear's back. Thanks for being part of the experience, Jer Bear. I, I, I miss you, man. I'm glad to have you back, buddy. It's good to be back. That kind of went the way people expected it, except Sugarloaf was holding his own. He actually got on top and was landing some shots. I was very impressed with what happened with him tonight, but I'm so happy to see the Jer Bear back in the game. Well, yeah, Mike, the Jer Bear, he's just calm, cool, and collected, though. He weathered a little bit of a storm, not a big storm, but, you know, sunk in a triangle choke, and that was all she wrote for the Sugarloaf. Was that the same singlet he used to wear before he left, you think? Because it looked a little tighter than the last time I saw him, but it's great to have him back. It was a great show tonight, a great night of fights, Phil Henderson. I mean, really, that group from Alco came out and showed us a lot tonight. Yeah, they did, Mike. They, they put their name on the map here in Utah, and uh, some teams in Utah are going to have to step up to take these guys on. And then Jer Bear's back. I think a lot of heavyweights, light heavyweights, and middleweights, because, you know, Jer Bear's kind of in between a couple divisions there, uh, are getting a little worried now. All right, big night of fights. We've got another big night of fights on Slate for you next week. Lima, Pule, and Hank Weiss in your main event. You don't want to miss that one. It's the Ultimate Combat Experience. We'll see you next week.